to another episode of the Umso Podcast. This is another solo, um solo, if you will. So this is a Q&A answering some business questions, but we do have some sponsors and let me run through those. We have PowerDot. If you're not familiar, PowerDot is a smart muscle stem. I've used it for years. Um, I still continue to use it to help uh, get rid of soreness and help uh, trying to keep this machine running. So what it does, if you used a TENS or a muscle stem in the past, it's going to be that, except it's going to target some different muscle fibers like your fast twitch and slow twitch, and it's going to be a really, really great product for that. It's also great because it's a really small unit. It's about you know, the size of an old CD Walkman for anyone who remembers those, and that covers everything. That's your pads, that's your wires. It's really easy to travel with, and the best part is your phone is going to be the app that controls it. It's going to be able to keep track of the stuff that you're doing so that you can see progress. You can track whether your pain tolerance has been all these type of things, as well as it telling you exactly and where, how to put pads. So head over to powerdot.com, use code UMSO and save 20% on getting yourself one of these beautiful items. We also have hybrid performance method. Uh, you guys know, and I've talked about it. Hybrid has been what's worked for me nutrition wise. They've kept me on point and help me stay in jacked. Uh, that's kind of the goal right now. I'm still chasing some cycling stuff and doing more and more of uh, endurance training as I'm going to be doing a big 18 mile trail run in May in Moab. So currently right now we are fueling up and uh, trying to get a little bit leaner so there's a little less ass for me to carry while running. I don't know what that body weight's going to look like, but they have me dialed in and we're making steady progress. So hybrid performance method, if you're looking for proper nutrition coaching for strength, endurance, Fitness shows, cutting, adding weight, it doesn't matter. They're going to be the right coaches to work with you. I was really stoked that they were able to also work in the way that I like to eat, which is a vertical diet. And on off days, I do more of a carnivore or keto style food. So they were able to help me decide what those macros could be and what better food choices would be. And also maybe some other stuff that would help me be a little bit more anti-inflammatory and make my body feel better along this route. So if you head over to hybrid performance method, use code UMSO, save yourself 5% on all your monthly subscriptions from those great people. It's going to be awesome. So get more jacked, look more awesome, be more capable. The limit does not exist. That's what the, the hybrid kids say. Steffi, never lie to you. So head over there, use code UMSO, and save yourself some cash. We also have Eat Right Foods, one of my all-time favorites. These guys have kept us just a better plan of staying fit, staying in shape. It's Eat Right Foods has been sending us uh, pre-made meals and handling all of our meal prep. If you, hand, if you head over to Eat Right Foods right now, you can get 10 meals delivered to your house for 90 bucks. Check out their menu. There's salmon. There's uh, this ground turkey chili. They're doing an actual chili. They've done steak and shrimp and of course chicken all great great products great stuff um it's all sourced from top quality people i know that we have combined some of the stuff that we've gotten in the past from stay classy meats as well so really good food and just allows me to make less fuck-ups man being able to have that stuff on tap in the fridge allows me to not have to think too much about the food i need to eat because i know i've got quality food that fits whatever plan i'm trying to accomplish in the fridge so head over to eat right foods use code umso and save yourself 15 or 10 percent on any of your orders that's 10 meals delivered to your house for 90 bucks can't beat that with a silver stick we also have stay classy meats you know who they are up your meat game it's the best quality food out there i can't say enough adjusted this idea of sustainable farming uh, grass-fed, grass-finished, all single source, directly from the farmers. We're cutting out a bunch of middleman slaughterhouses and all this bullshit, and it's all being done direct. Now, this type of thing makes a really big deal to me is I want to be able to support sustainable farming, and I want to be able to support quality food. But what I don't want to do is, is have to pay completely out of the ass to do one or the other. And Stay Classy Meats has found an affordable method so that you can pick and build your box depending on whatever you want. You can build it a la carte with whatever meats you'd want. So if you head over to Stay Classy Meats, use code UMSO, save yourself 10% and build whatever box you need to get that meat delivered to your house. And maybe this is just a supplement of some of the protein that you eat during the month. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. I think it's a great plan as well as it's better for the environment and it's better quality food for you. Like you're getting both sides of that coin. So if you head over to Stay Classy Meats, use code UMSO and save yourself some cash on getting the best meat in the world delivered to you, you're going to be happy about it. This map.
Uh-huh. All right, I will be over there that way shortly. Uh, any chance I can come and swap vehicles since I need to get another one done? Perfect, I'll bring the other one and change you out. <laughs> All right. Yes. It is a 64 El Camino. Perfect, thank you very much. And last but not least is our sponsors. We have Chili Technology. So I've been sleeping with this thing called an Uller. Uh, prior to this, I had a Chili Pad. And what this does, it's a small box that's going to stay under the side of your bed. And uh, you lay a, um, it's blanket, I guess would be what you'd call it. It's mattress cover uh, down over your mattress, but under your fitted sheet. And there is a bunch of... Uh, tubing that's going to run through this that's going to circulate water and so what this machine does under the bed is it actually cools that water down and keeps your bed at whatever temperature you'd like for me i can set it at 50 degrees and it's been really crazy the fact that i'm able to sleep in a hoodie and sweatpants basically all year we're all looking for the ability to try to push performance that's really what i still give a shit about whether that's food or that's nutrition or it's mental and one of the biggest things that affects all of this stuff is quality of sleep. And so having something that's going to help you sleep deeper, sleep better, and get more, more out of the hours that you are asleep is really going to be one of the biggest things that you can do to help boost your performance in a day-to-day -day life. So head over to Chili Technology, use code UMSO, save yourself some money, and get one of these great units. We're also doing a giveaway during the month of October with Hate Brand Goods. Any order is going to put you up to win a single unit. It's a $700 unit that we're going to send out to somebody and change their life. So if you head over to Chili Technology, check out their Uller system is the one I'm using. It's got an app that runs it. It's really amazing. So head over there, use code I'm so scoop some great stuff up. They also have a cool chilled blanket, which I'm very excited to try. So pretty, pretty rad there. This is the only problem with these weighted blankets is I'm just too fucking big and hot. So if I can get one that's going to stay cool, nice. Cool sandwiches, they call it. All right, let's go ahead and crack into this show. And this show, again, is a Q&A from the old Instagrams. Got some questions here. I'm going to go ahead and rip off an answer for you and see what it is. Mostly talking about business stuff, which uh, ugh, I don't know that I'm ideal for that, but we're going to give it, we're going to give it hell. So again, let me go ahead and give a quick background into how Hate Brand started. So I say this quite a bit, and I think it's important to know that I started Hate Brown with zero dollars invested, and now it is 2020, and we've been doing more than over a million dollars in gross sales for the last hand f since 2017, and you know we're we're closing in on doing two million a year. So for to give a reference of what size business, and so this is gross sales. I mean, I'm not going to get into profit margins, really, stuff like that. But I mean, I don't really give a shit. We have about a 65% profit margin and I have some overhead with as far as, you know, paying uh, vehicles, this and that, um, and then reinvesting to grow the business. So the way it started was I had enough people asking me to do some hate shirts based on some writing I did in one of my books and um, finally came up with a shirt and then we did a pre-sale. And uh, with that pre-sale, we opened it for about two weeks and sold a little under 100 shirts, I believe. And then from there, I took the profit of that um, and then made more shirts, had some stock and continued to sell. And then realized we need to come up with some new ideas and new, uh, new marketing. And since then, we've just tried to kind of figure out what's the best rhythm for us to continue generating sales throughout time. And so here's where we are now, um, six years after we started. And this is now what I do for a living. Um, it has not been an easy pass, uh, path. And I've done some things a little differently. Like I, um, I didn't rent a warehouse and hire people. I did it outsourced through my team that's in Kansas City. Uh, they were already doing some warehousing and inventory for other people. Uh, this is similar to some of the other fulfillment companies out there, except for it's not as expensive. And these are better people to work with for me because I can actually get in touch with them. This isn't just a company that does that. They just happen to do it now. And so uh, my team, Phil, and those guys in Kansas have been incredible and are a big part of the success of why this has continued to work. Uh, I lean into things in a way of 
I'm going to do everything that needs to get done. But as the business grows, where I want to invest is finding better people to do the things that I don't need to be doing. There are some things within this business that I need to be at the wheel of, like the creative side of it, the concepts, the, uh, the marketing and how I want it to be advertised and what the general message and vibe is, right? Like that stuff I got to be at the wheel for and I need to be creative for it. Um, the packing of boxes, the managing the inventory, the doing that type of stuff, I can pay someone else to do a better job than I'll give a shit. So that's where I tend to work with people. Um, recently was able to add um, a videographer, Brant, to our team. And that's been great too, because now I don't have to edit and I can do more things like this podcast and uh, do other things that I find to be really valuable. And so that's, that's how the business has grown. Give you an idea of uh, where we started. And uh, here we go. Let's dive into some questions. Bricks and grits. Ever, ever intimidated to run your own business? If so, more doable than you thought? Yeah, I've been intimidated to do it every time I've done it. Um, it started, you know, in uh, 2005 when I opened a bicycle shop after college, and that went pretty tits up. Um, I did not do a great job. 22-year-old um, me didn't make a lot of great business decisions, and um, the brick and mortar thing that I did just didn't work. Um, there's a number of reasons. Part of it just being me and not being quite focused and not really knowing what the fuck I'm doing. Um, you know, another being that we weren't making enough money, but that comes from the other side, right? Like it's not just fucking magic. So that's, that's kind of how it was. And I was definitely intimidated to start hate, but luckily when I started hate, I had a real job. I was working in the petrochemical field and had been doing that for a period of time. And so I had an income. I had a real job that I really didn't have any plan on leaving. Um, I was still competing in the Highland Games, and this was essentially started as I was making a few bucks throwing in 2011 and was hoping that when I finished competing in the Highland Games that, well, some of that money would continue to come in from some book sales or anything like that, maybe a couple t-shirts. And it has kind of just continued to grow and we've stayed on the gas and um, it's now what I get to do for a living and it's the fucking coolest thing in the world. So it is intimidating, man. There is a risk. There is a risk of failure with, with trying. So as I've grown up and versed the last time where I did the brick and mortar, that took some loans and took some debt. Uh, whereas this started from zero and has been allowed to kind of grow at a normal, more organic pace, which with a bit less overhead. So, I mean, I also didn't take a paycheck from hate brand till 2016, which was, I think we, I think we did about 700,000 that year it was the first year that I took a paycheck, uh, doing, uh, we did 125,000 the year before that. And I did not get paid. Uh, there's just not enough there if you're still trying to grow and market and do everything. So that's what my experience was there. And so, yeah, there is definitely an intimidation to it. But at the same time, like, got to roll the dice, man, when the getting's good, because you don't know, like, I can always go get a job, right? So I don't find a ton of risk to that. Like I work hard, I'm pretty smart, and I'm trying to develop more skills and be focused on what I do. And so I believe I could add value to any company that I was hoping to work for. Now, whether or not the pay's the same, and I don't know. But I work hard. I've got some skills and, and I'm confident in the things I do. So I don't really have a risk factor of like, holy shit, what if I have to get a job? Well, I'll just get a job. I mean, I will probably also be working on trying to figure out how to do back on my own thing. But another one of those things I've added to this is to not be cornered into any situation, right? So I'm, you know, I have Habit Coffee, which is doing its thing. And then I've got the podcast, which is another income stream with sponsors. And then I've got the YouTube channel, which is another. And then various things like that so that I can give hate brand a little bit more room to breathe um, financially and continue to make smart decisions that don't feel like I'm backed into a corner because I need to pay bills. So that's what's helped me be able to stay a little bit better. Um, roster runner. Uh, email or text marketing. What is up, Dan? We do email marketing. Uh, I'm interested in doing text message marketing. Um, I just haven't quite got it off the ground yet. It is something I'm inquiring about toward my marketing team and I need to do more of. 
So hopefully kind of get back into that more next year. I do think it's a good thing. I do see quite a big return on the people who I've talked to who are doing the text marketing. I do also find it a little bit annoying, but at the same time, like we get enough fucking notifications right now that just kind of part of it. It's what you got to do is, is you got to figure out how to fight for the attention of eyes and not be kind of shy about it. It's just not how the world works anymore. Chris Jones, 912. What's your favorite product you've made other than the goat shorts? Goat shorts would be number one. Um, favorite product I've ever made, man. We've done some cool, unique stuff. I like some of the wood stuff that we've gotten made. I like, um, I really like our everyday joggers. I, I do really think those are something that I'm very proud of. They're very comfortable. They look great and they fit very, very well. Um, I mean, other than that, I'm just, I'm proud of some of the design concepts and what we've done with it and kind of had a general message that has stayed with the brand and allowed the brand to kind of grow and do its own thing. I'm very proud that I didn't make it met Vincent, whatever. And it's actually its own thing. Um, which gives me such a freedom, right? That I'm not just making, I'm not just making lifting gear. I'm not making gym apparel. I want to be able to make whatever I want. And so keychains and belts and backpacks. And right now I, I'm really proud of our duffel bags. The strong as fuck duffels are really, really cool. And um, those took quite a time, <laughs> took, took some time to get done. So I think, um, I, I think it, those, those are my favorites, man. I hope that helps uh, answer that. Vic Sanchez. 209. Do you think you could have had the same success with hate if you weren't a pro athlete? So essentially would hate be the same if I hadn't had the success I did in the Highland Dames. So I do think it's possible because there's other people who have had successful businesses without that background. However, it sure fucking helps. And I can't pretend that it doesn't. Um, it's definitely giving me a different starting point to jump from because I already had an audience. And that's really the biggest. It's not so much that it's not so much that I met Vincent needed the Highland games, but it kind of jumpstart things, right? Like I needed, as I'm not making Highland games apparel, right? Like I didn't focus it just on the sport and I'm not sitting around trying to ride the coattails of what I did as an athlete, but it did start there. And it definitely, because I was doing that, I already had an audience and I know building an audience from scratch gets really tricky. Um, especially now it's harder and harder than it was whenever I started six years ago. So, but with that said, I still think the right time to start a business would have been five years ago. If not, the second best time is right now. Rury bracket pricing for products. For me, pricing on products, I let the market decide pricing, right? So I look at other people's companies, like whether that's Flagner Fail, uh, Donuts and Deadlifts, uh, Violent Gentlemen, Norse, um, Massonomics, the other guys that are in our space. And uh, that's, that's where I look. And so from that point on, it's easy for me to say, okay, t-shirts are being sold for 30 bucks. So that's what people are willing to pay. I don't want to undercut that market, nor do I want to fucking try to leak out every single dollar on the back end. If, if we're kind of in agreement that people will pay $30 for shirts in this space and pay 50 bucks for hoodies, blah, blah, blah. Then that's the price. Um, the problem with that comes is, you know, overhead per item does tend to change, you know, depending on how much you cut, you know, how much, how many different ink colors are, what the shirt fabric is, what the blank material is, where it's from those type of things change. And so we, I don't do it based solely off of a, margin. There are some things I'm going to base off of a margin that I, I know that I want to know the minimum. And that kind of allows me to decide, are these products that I think I can sell and make any money? Because if they're not going to generate some profit, then it's tough to justify um, using resources on it. That's marketing, that's getting photography done, that's getting it on the website, that's having it manufactured, having it shipped, having it stored in the warehouse. Like these are a bunch of things that do cost money and cost time. And if I'm not going to make any profit, then it doesn't justify that a lot. So trying to be smarter about that as I've grown with the company, that's another thing I've tried to do. Jason Bollinger, I'm starting my first company. Do you have any tips on mistakes to avoid? Just get started. Just get started and start figuring it out and 
give it hell and, and commit to it. That would be the biggest man is if you really want it to grow, it's going to take a full commitment. Um, at the same time, it doesn't need to be perfect to start. I think people get panicky on starting their first company because they believe all this paperwork needs to get done and filing and LLCs and taxes. What I believe is get a PayPal account, get some product and start selling it. And then as you start getting some cash and realize this is going to work, start doing the business shit so that you can handle taxes and do the rest of it and get a business account and all those type of things. That would be my suggestion to say also figure out how to fall, uh, fail pretty small as you're starting. Um, stay conservative in my opinion and, and then make sure you're making smart decisions that none of which if they go bad are going to fuck everything up because there's going to be trouble. So, keep chipping away at it and try to continue making small, steady progress instead of fucking ramp up and go crazy. And then something you can't fulfill or can't maintain. Dave bought six one nine. Am I hiring? Not really. There's a position I'm interested in. Um, I think I would, I would like to start talking to someone as far as an apparel designer. I'd like to bring on someone who can help me do cut and sew and can help kind of, deal with sourcing of material and figure out fabric patterns and those type of things to help me go forward with some more unique items. And that, that's about all I'm looking for right now, but I'm not looking for it. But if you're listening, send me a DM. Nice. What else do we got? Oh no. Allie, Allie does my hair. Asking to see if my calculus for business class is actually applicable. Uh, it may be for my accountant, but it sure as shit isn't for me. Um, I, I'm not that smart. I didn't take any of that shit. So um, I don't use it. If that helps, uh, there's a lot of things that are smart enough, smarter than me and my accountant really helps. <coughs> Allie does my hair again. Um, do you make limited quantities for some items because it's not profitable to make more? I make limited quantities on some items because I believe that's kind of the sweet spot of how many I will sell. Like I don't want to end up with a big sparse of sizing, like, you know, one small and a, you know, one extra large of, of a shirt or, or, or 20 of those. Right. And then the rest of the sizes sell out. What I would rather is over the course of about a month, everything disappears and then I can work on the next thing. Um, to me, I have two types of customers. I have new customers and returning customers. And if I only, you know, do a few pieces and restock them all the time, I'm only really servicing new customers. But if I continue to put out new designs in limited quantities, I'm servicing both as I'm not building up this big giant inventory. And I'm also not only serving new people. So I try to take care of my, my diehard stay at home customers or not stay at home, but my diehard customers that have been with us for a long time. And I really, really appreciate you guys and want to keep making rad shit for you. And, um, you know, as well as creating new stuff for, for, for new people who, who don't know the brand to see and for them to pick up new stuff and be part of it. But I also like the supply and demand aspect of doing limited quantity. It seems to be pretty smart and work well for us. Bush Whack Life. Do you ever meet with small business owners? Um, not like in that type of setting. It's not like I reach out and like, hey, business guys unite and fucking blow my conch shell. But I've got friends who own small businesses and we chat pretty regular and occasionally run business stuff by each other to just kind of touch base on ideas. You know, perhaps there's someone who's already done it and done it better than you and there's something else to learn from them. That's kind of how I do it with everyone. G the RD, uh, top three marketing tips. <sighs> so Instagram's great. Um, we've had a lot of success with Instagram ads and Facebook ads, and it's because they've done such a good job with data mining and target audience that they can kind of guarantee a return on whatever your investment's going to be. It's pretty fucking incredible, but that's never been the case with advertising in history. And so there is a point that if they have enough information, <clears throat> they can reach your audience. And so those things help, man. Don't, they're not, they're not a scam. And the people that are good at it are really, really good at it. They're also expensive. And so, you know, spending money on marketing, it's been, it's been good for us. Um, 
the other thing, marketing tips, um, my suggestion would be avoid discounts, like a store wide discount as much as you can. Always add more value. Always take, you know, do a giveaway, do, you know, a shaker cup is added to the order, stickers are added to the order, do these type of things and you're adding more value to orders instead of discounting your products and saying that people can just wait to get them at a lower price. Um, that's been a good one. Um, other marketing tips is just consistency. It's consistency across the social media platforms. And I think that you need to be kind of available on everything. It's, it's an eyes game. And so the more eyes you get, the you know X percentage of those eyes are going to purchase from you. And so you need more eyes to get a bigger X. Juice box, Brendan, how did you start up a clothing line? I kind of already explained that. So we're going to skip right over. Jake Heinrich, taxes, saving, budgeting tips. Would love some real world info and examples on those. So I pay myself a salary. I'm not paid based on how well the company's doing. In some ways I am and in some ways I'm not, right? Um, I mean, I have to be, it's not like the company can grow exponentially or shrink exponentially and I still get paid the same. There is a certain level and I tend to stay on the, lower end of what the business could afford to pay me a salary. Um, and that kind of allows tax wise, right? Like I would rather my personal income seem less as I can write off more things for the business as the way it works. So I try to stay as pretty smart along those lines as I can. And again, that's all advice from my CPA who, uh, who didn't come on until year uh, 18 or sorry, uh, 2018 to really kind of dial everything in for us. There is a real business and that's made a big difference too, of just kind of knowing what we can and can't do what we can afford and being smart with, you know, that if I'm going to buy a vehicle, perhaps letting the company buy it and using it for advertising as I am going to use it, YouTube videos, I am going to use it in marketing. And so being smart with purchases like that, that kind of allow us to take more advantage of those type of things. Uh, the Zach guy I always wondered how much you spent on the initial startup of hate. That's a zero dollars. Any plan for brick and mortar? Nope. Why would anyone fucking do that today? Seems like a terrible plan. Duh, duh. Aiden Paul startup essentials for you. Hmm. I wrote a book and also had a following. I would do those that I would, I would start building your brand before you're trying to sell your audience anything. That would be my suggestion or start a company and give it hell. That those are, those are the big ones for me. Um, that would, that would be it is, is start, start kind of small and learn as you're going. Um, really quick though, speaking of small businesses, I don't know if anyone's been reckon seeing the stuff Mark Bell has been posting and it's been really, really rad seeing, the growth of slingshot. Um, I'm excited. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud that I've known Mark through the whole process that I remember going to the old house and seeing where they were printing and doing stuff in the garage and shipping stuff out. And now to see where they are is really, really incredible. And it inspires the shit out of me. So if you want, you should hand it over to Mark Bell's pot, Mark Bell slingshot, use code umso 15, save 15% on any items from there. That's wrist wraps. That's belts. It's, uh, there's a new markbell.com coming up soon, which is going to be a ton of information. I'll be part of that. Uh, really, really great stuff from those guys. So if you head over there, get some wrist wraps, get a belt, get a slanger. That's right. Best bench press device known to man. And use code umso15. Save yourself 15%. Check out at markbellslingshot.com. P Vans 3. What are some strategic goals you have for hate, umso, and habit? <sighs> strategic goals are always progress. And so it's always trying to figure out how do we do more than we did um, and be smart about it. I don't want to just burn through a bunch of resources um, to get that number bigger. Like I don't want to, you know, push habit uh, with an advertising campaign if it's not going to benefit the company. And so it's a slow growth as it becomes sustainable. That's, that's really the big stuff that I've seen. Um, and as far as, you know, goals, uh, yeah, like, I mean, I want more, right? Like I know the next kind of goal for UMSO is I want to have 50,000 downloads a month. Um, 
I'd also have it. I just want to keep increasing business, which has been great. And I want to keep increasing visit on the, your, uh, your new habit site, not just from sales that go through the hate.com, but have habit become its own thing. And that's been kind of cool to see that starting to grow as well. And for hate, it's just do more, man. And so I want to keep growing the business and growing it in a smart way. Start adding people to the team that I think really benefit the team as far as you know, designers or videographers, or photographers, or any of these type of things that can kind of help do things I'm not great at. So that's, uh, that's kind of the goals. Derek Carpenter, have you noticed any dramatic changes in consumer engagement pre and COVID and now? Yes. Um, sales are definitely up. Uh, it seems that anybody working in the online space uh, COVID has, well, more people are at home, more people are looking at their phones, more people are ordering shit. So we're trying to, to keep up with that as well and be smart because we don't know what the end of this looks like or what the shift back afterwards is. It seems that this was kind of a, a time that if people were prepared, it went really well. And if you weren't prepared, it kind of bit you in the ass. Um, it's, it's a fucking weird one, man. I'm, I'm very fortunate that we're in an online space and we're not a brick and mortar and we can continue doing what we do for a living. I've been lucky that my warehouse team and everyone else was deemed essential for what they do, and they were allowed to keep working. Um, it would have been really fucking tough, man, and I have a lot of empathy for anyone out there who's trying to run a business that the government essentially fucked you. I'm sorry. That super, super sucks. I wish that wasn't the case. Sean Lane. Now, as far as engagement, sorry, Derek, but as far as engagement goes, those type of things. Sales are up, but the Instagram uh, engagement or any of that type of stuff seems to be always a moving target on the algorithm. And then again, people may just not be into the shit I'm posting. So it's some mixture of those two things. And I have to ask myself the question is, am I interested in posting things solely to get more engagement and likes? And I'm not. So who gives a shit? Sean Lane, what do you think is the best thing you did to grow your personal brand? Uh, win two world championships? Uh, which allowed me to get my foot in the door a lot of places that allowed me to kind of be more than just a normal guy. When I met, you know, Mark Twain, you know, Mark Twain, I haven't hung out with him, Mark, Mark Bell, or uh, early on with a, uh, you know, friendship with Chrissy McCagney or, or Kelly Starrett or Jesse Burdick or any of the other friends I've met. The, the world champion behind my name sure allows me to get in that room easier. People are a little bit like, Oh shit, you did a thing. Right. Um, but being someone that they want to deal with or talk to a second time, they don't give a shit about world champion. World champion is a thing that gets you through the door once. Now, whether or not you're the type of person who anyone wants to fucking hang out with or do business with, or any of those type of things, that's on you. So I think that's probably the biggest thing I did, but, the second side of that is that I can communicate that I'm likable and I go into any relationship that I'm going to start with the feeling of how do I help? It's not how do you help me, but how do I show value and how do I generate value for what you're doing is by being a friend or a person. I'm not necessarily trying to increase your sales, but perhaps there's concepts we can know or people we can meet or introductions we can make those type of things, right? Like I want to, if I can help give you empowerment to do your thing better, that's fucking awesome. Even if that's just bat around ideas between two people that you trust. So I think those type of things have been really the big stuff for me. Sean Catalyst PT. How did you find or discover your mission statement behind hate? And are you still finding it? So the mission statement behind hate was this, like, I don't want to be complacent, right? I want to be able to drive myself. And for me, it's being able to pinpoint what things I want to get better at. Essentially, what I dislike about myself, what I hate about myself, what I find to be weaknesses, what I find to be um, liabilities of my own personality. And so I'm willing to not let myself off the hook and focused enough that I can address those things. So that's kind of what the mission statement has always been is this always being willing to, to be honest with yourself, to keep pursuing enough to realize that you suck at this or you were wrong 
or you could do better or that you didn't invest enough time that success doesn't come without that effort. And so there's a lot of things, you know, I can't control, you know, genetically timing my age <laughs> injuries at this point, but I can still control how much effort I put into things. And that's really where it's continued to evolve. And now I pivot from training and, you know, using that fire to drag myself out to the field to, to throw every day, to compete the way I did to, to do more and, and outwork people. Now that translating to my business has been great. It's been translating to the podcast as well. And I really want to drive people to push themselves to find that thing. We live in a strange time, man, where people are very focused on being comfortable and happy and emotionally stable when that's not whatever worked for me to get better. It was always this desire that I could be better, that I could be more and that, and it wasn't, I'm going to show them. It's not that it's not, I'm, I, I'm not fucking doing it for anyone else. I'm doing this because it matters to me. I do it every day and that makes it easy. I don't give a shit about the support behind it, which is great. And I'm stoked that I have fans and people that support me, but I would be using this in any line of work that I was in as long as I give a shit about it. That's the thing is I can't pretend to give a shit about stuff. And so if it's not something I care about, I just need to be not involved. So that's that all or in all in mentality is like, I it's, it's all or nothing for me. It's either fuck yes or it's a no. And that's what hate has continued to kind of grow into. Um, I think that mission statement will continue to evolve, but I don't think the base principle of complacency with where I'm at is never going to be acceptable. Uh, you know, I can celebrate previous successes and I can also realize that I've reached a max potential in one arena. And then it's time to shift that. Uh, this hate thing isn't like I'm going to run myself into the ground to prove that I can hit a bigger total. It's about me being better. And if I'm starting to beat myself up and get hurt and be miserable, that's not getting better anymore. That's crossed to the other side. And so I'm trying to optimize and be the best Matt Vincent that I can fucking be every day. Like that's, that's the big goals. And it's, it's being willing to be honest with myself, to hate my own bullshit, to hate the voice in my head that says good enough, or that was fine or who cares. And it's, it's stick to it and stay passionate and stay passionate about it. Do, do. I think that may be it. That's it. That's all of our questions. So thank you guys for listening. I appreciate that. And it's always fun doing these. So these are a little short um solos. And this one today is on starting a business with zero dollars. Thank you guys for listening. Head over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review. Also, please check out our sponsors, Hybrid Performance Method, Eat Right Foods, Power Dot, Stay Classy Meats, Chili Technology, Mark Bell Slingshot, and Hate Brand Goods and Habit Coffee. Those are all great things. Use code UMSO at all those places, except... Mark Bell Slingshot, use code UMSO15 and save yourself money. Thank you guys for listening. And um, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you guys giving me a platform to talk and uh, allow me to do this. So I'll keep sharing as much information as I possibly can with you guys and uh, keep trying to get better at this. Thank you so much. Spread hate. Always party.